Good morning, everyone. I remembered it's Tuesday. Perhaps you have. Perhaps you're catching up. But it's certainly Tuesday, 21st of July already, 2020. Perhaps one of the things that I can now say to a few of you at least is Happy New Haircut. I know that a number of folk have been away getting their locks, their tresses trimmed, cut, lopped off um, after a long, long wait. And many others have got their appointments all made and ready to have their hair cut. And well, that'll be perhaps a weight off our minds and perhaps fringes will be cut enough so that we can see clearly again. I have kept my fringe cut, um, so I'm quite sure I'll get a huge row for that when I get back eventually to the hairdresser. I'm waiting for the rush to, to pass and then I'll get in there, hopefully, in a wee while. But seeing a bit more clearly, but do we? Are we seeing things any more clearly now than we have before? That's a huge question and sometimes I think absolutely not. It's just a quagmire of stuff out there. Looking through a fringe or not, life is just getting complex again. And not the same complex that we had before when our diaries were filled and we had not enough time and we're squeezing stuff in. But the complex now is much more about what is safe, what is not safe, should we step forward, sideways, backwards, at what speed are we going, all sorts of different things. And it is so complex. And every day when there seems to be more freedom offered, it just seems to get more difficult to make decisions and more difficult to know what it is we can be doing, should be doing, might be doing to keep everybody safe. It's a bit like crossing the road, the Green Cross code, or in my day it was, I think, just the highway code. But you look right, look left, look right again, then when the road is clear, you cross. But as you cross, you continue to look left and right in every direction just to make sure that you are still safe, that there is nothing suddenly come round the corner. And so it's being aware of all of that and keeping that code. If you're crossing the road, however, in Kathmandu, then all bets are off because that's just something else altogether. It doesn't matter which way you look, there's traffic coming towards you and it doesn't matter how much traffic is coming towards you, you go anyway and just expect them to go around you or stop. But we can't really do that today. We can't do it and most of us don't have the courage, the confidence to be doing that, which is probably a good thing. We have to be aware, we have to be watching, we have to be continually thinking because the future is not what we have left behind. The future is going to be really very different and so different that we can't actually yet imagine it or plan for it because it's just so out there. We simply have to take courage sometimes and take that step off the curb, take that tiny step just to see what is happening, not to see if we'll survive hopefully, but just to test the waters a little bit and work it out. Previously, because of the life that we'd lived and because we knew all the probabilities, we could make judgments on what was relatively safe or relatively dangerous. But we don't have enough evidence now of this new present day. We don't have enough or a wide enough range of evidence to tell us the probabilities, to help us make those decisions. And so we continue to have questions and fears and hopes. And even when you ask those questions, we won't get a definitive answer. We won't be able to be told, yep, that's safe, that's not, do this, don't do that, and everything will be well. We don't have that. We're not going to have that. So it's learning to live with this uncertainty, learning to live with these different variants around us. So many variants in this equation that it is virtually impossible to make decisions that we know are going to be absolutely right. The one variant that we do have a little bit of control over, however, is ourselves. And let's face it, we are all variant. What we do from one day to the next can be completely different depending on our mood and how we feel and who's around us. 
and what information, what news we're getting. But we are the variant that we do have a little control over, at least, or, or we should have. Are we still washing our hands? Am I still washing my hands? Am I still keeping distant? Am I wearing a face covering? Am I doing what I should be doing to keep myself safe, but also to make the area around me safe for other people? It's that understanding. It's not just about us. It's about other people too. People that we know and love and care for, but also people that we don't know. Strangers who just happen to be on the same bit of road to us, the same aisle in the supermarket to us, whatever. But we have a little bit of control in our actions. And that's always been the way. It's always been for us to decide how we should behave. We just have to think a bit more about it now. And maybe, you know, we should always have been thinking a bit more about it. What we do in our decisions is, has always been important. We might say in the church, it's I been. Such a phrase loved in the church, it's I been like this. We've I done it that way. I been. Well, you know, it's not I been. The church has been changing for <laughs> millennium. The church is not the same as it was, believe it or not, for good or ill. And, you know, that's the truth of the matter. Some changes are for the good and some are not for the good. And that, again, depends on our own perspective and who we are and what we want and expect out of the church and our life. I been. No, there's not I been pews in the church. There's not I been a place that we have sat. There's not I been a way to worship. There's not I been much of that. So all of that is really up for grabs. But the thing that has I been, and this is what we need to concentrate on, there are I beans that we really can say with confidence, I been. God, God has I been. His love for you and me has I been and forever will be. Jesus' teaching, when he brought these to us, these have always been the same. They've I been the same. And they always will be. His desire for us to live life as he did. I been. The Holy Spirit. I been. <laughs> the Holy Spirit was there at the very beginning of creation and will be there for all eternity. I been and always will be. So there are things that we can put in place. There are anchors and rocks upon which we can build. And in this lifestyle that we have at the moment, which is like living on moving sand, we need to remember what it is that we can depend on and where we can have absolute confidence. And that's in God. It's not in our religion as such, the way that we do things. It's the, why we bother doing these things at all? Because God loves us and we serve him. Because God invites us to worship and witness and serve and, and we've said yes. How we do that is changing. So let's grab onto and grasp securely onto what is there at the centre and will never, ever change. Our faith as seen in the world will make a difference to the people around us too. It should colour how we live. It should colour the decisions we make. It should also give us some confidence not to rush out there and do things that we really shouldn't be doing. But give us confidence to take those small steps to test the waters. A bit like going out in the water to walk on the water with Jesus. Sometimes we'll manage it and sometimes we'll feel ourselves sinking and want to get back into that boat as quickly as we possibly can. But whether on the waters or whether on the boat, our God is with us. Jesus is there. So does that make the decisions for today any clearer? Not at all. Not at all. It probably just flags up more questions that we want to ask and need to ask. But that has I been too, our questioning of God, of our faith, of our religion, of the way that we do things. The questions should always be there and should always be asked. 
if we're certain and have no questions in our faith, then I'm not sure what faith it is we're following because that says we understand everything. We know everything that God knows as God knows it. And well, I know I'm not nearly there. And to be honest, I don't think any of us are nearly there. With all those questions and with all the uncertainty that is certainly around us today, with all our desires and perhaps our craving to go back to what we consider has I been, we need to look forward. We need to place our hand quite firmly into God's and let him lead us. And we need to make decisions. They won't all be right. They won't all be the best. But we do need to make decisions of whether to go or stay, move forward, move back, move sideways move some way. Do we see clearly? Well, it's not just about cutting your fringe. It's not just about <laughs> cleaning your glasses, which maybe I should do sometime. It's not even about having, dare I say it, 2020 vision. It's about knowing that we can put our trust in God and living by his code of practice for all around us, kindness, gentleness and love. Let us pray. God, you are our I been God. And we turn to you in worship, knowing that you will continue loving us to all eternity. You will continue to be with us for all time. Jesus, you are our I been saviour coming to tell us in person that God's love is for everyone without condition. Holy Spirit, you have I been since the beginning of time, an active ingredient of God in our world today. Forgive us, God, for our holding tight to the things that we deem essential, the things that we have added or we have continued to or we have simply refused to let go. We're holding on tight to them such that we miss the chance to grasp more of you. We have very little idea of the future and to be honest, we have always had very little idea of the future. But now our confidence is shaken. All that we thought secure shaken or removed and yet within that we discover that you remain you are our rock and our anchor and you remain lord give us humility to turn to you with our questions and our doubts and our fears give us humility to see very clearly that we do not have the answers that give certainty we do not have the certainty that gives absolute confidence. But instead we place our confidence in you. You who with mercy and with grace and with absolute love will hold us and remain with us forever. Lord, give us faith enough to remain with you, to stay with you. We pray for all that will happen today. We pray for those who are ill, are dying, those sitting with loved ones nearing the end of their life here on earth. We pray for nations, for areas, for countries, for refugee camps where COVID is just beginning, where the virus is rife. And resources are beyond stretched. But it seems all hope is gone. God, draw alongside them and hold them. We pray for folk returning to work a little excited, a little afraid. And those for whom there is now no job, no place to go, no money coming in. We pray for businesses, 
offices, restaurants, bars opening up. And we pray for our churches, some already open, others preparing for that. All, all congregations anxious. We pray for our own Kirk Session and leadership team, our staff, preparing and planning for safe opening. And Lord, we pray for ourselves that we will remember the lessons of lockdown as we emerge, that we will not leave them behind, those important aspects of life that we have discovered and rediscovered, of time with family, of time to rest, of time with you, our God. We pray in humility and we pray in confidence and we pray to the God whose love for each one has I been and ever will be. Amen. Whatever your day holds, I hope it holds some enjoyment, rest, relaxation. The sun is shining here, so that augurs well for a, a good dog walk at some point. First of all, going off to a Bible study. And can I assure you in our Bible studies, if you're thinking of joining us, let us know. Come along. There are lots of questions and fewer answers. There's lots of laughter and fun. And lots of picking out what's important in life for us and our faith. Lots of learning together. I pray that we learn together always. And especially in this time of uncertainty that we help one another to learn to gain confidence, to remember friends from way back as well as new, and to keep in touch and to continuing keeping in touch. It's important, especially for those who more than ever now, more than ever, feel alone, left behind, cast aside. Enjoy your day. God bless you.